All right, welcome to AFAPWA's third action circle in the Transforming Education Cycle. Today is August 1st, 2020. And in two days on August 3rd, the moon will be full. And in August, this is called the Sturgeon Moon. It's the beginning of Back to School Month, National Breastfeeding Month, uh, National Eye Exam Month, National Immunization Awareness Month. And today is also known as Dogist 1st, um, which is the universal birthday for shelter dogs. And so I am really, that's one of the things that I um, am interested in is um, animals and animal welfare. And so I thought that one, when I was looking up what is special about today, I thought that was really cool. So dog is first. If you have a shelter dog, that's its birthday. Uh, my name is Abigail Twyman. I'm joining you today from the home I share with my husband, Dustin, and our dog, Ter Zeppelin, in, our, in the community of Nockety Bay. Our Alaskan oasis is located on northern Prince of Wales Island in southeast Alaska, which is located on Blinket Ani, the land of the Clinket people, specifically in what is the ancestral homeland of the people of Texican. I'm honored to be able to share this space with my ancestors and the ancestors of those indigenous to this land I currently inhabit, who fill my soul with the fire that fuels my action. And I am dedicated to remembering forward and passing along their immense wisdom for the benefit of future generations and protection of our shared home. I'm also deeply honored to be able to share this space with all the beautiful humans and change catalysts out there who have been inspired and empowered to join our pod. I'm dedicated to using the privileged body I was born into and this platform to catalyze collective action. And I thank you for your commitment to taking action in the service of creating peace for yourself, your family, your community, and all inhabitants of Mother Earth. Um, we had a few people join us. And so I'm just going to make sure that they have their numbers. Um, and Nancy and Lisa, <clears throat> um, you are in, in circle. We put ourselves in number order um, because in real, in real life, if we were doing it, um, non-COVID times, we would all be together in a circle um, so that keeps us organized. Um, so Action Circles is all about learning how to have more effective conversations around challenging topics, as well as effectively collaborating with others who share our vision, mission, and values. When we come to Circle, we assume that all the answers to our questions are within the Circle because we've brought the right people together with a collective wealth of knowledge and experience. Our guiding theory is that our respective change efforts within our personal and professional lives, as well as our movements and organizations, have had limited impact on the overall trajectory of the data. Therefore, it is incumbent upon us to adjust our approach. By bringing voices together and guiding the conversation in a new yet very old way, we have the potential to develop plans of action which are much more likely to get us to the end goal a truly just, equal, and peaceful world, the way it used to be and the way it always should have been. Our goal is to catalyze the spread of action circles across the world in the service of creating peace through collective action. Today, we are continuing our conversation about how we as a collective could, will come together to transform the educational system. COVID-19 has brought the, to the forefront the stark reality that many of us already knew that something needs to change to ensure all children are afforded the opportunity to succeed in their lives. The path towards this ideal comes through a just and equitable system, which is not our current reality. The intended outcomes for action circles is to end each cycle with a clear picture of the next right actions, both as a collective and as individuals. Thank you all for being here today to share your wisdom with the circle in response to the guiding question, what will we do to transform education? Before we begin the conversation, um, it's important to establish agreements that will guide us and protect us within the circle. The six agreements are a starting point for our action circle and they belong to the circle. They will be reviewed at the beginning of every circle and any member of the circle can propose any modifications. 
they, I have updated them slightly as I recently participated in a, another training that follows a similar model and, and also received some feedback from uh, pod members. So I wanted to integrate those. So please listen carefully because they'll, they're a little bit different for those of you who have been here in the past. So the first one is that while every action circle will be recorded and made public, the story shared within the circle should only be shared in a way that protects, uplifts, inspires, and empowers others. Our second agreement is that we listen for understanding and are mindful of how our words and actions impact the flow of the circle and take responsibility for addressing any hurts we may cause. The third agreement is that we know that we won't solve all these complex problems overnight and are committed to learning and unlearning so we can be more impactful with our actions. The fourth agreement is that from time to time we will pause to regather our thoughts or, or focus. Silent counsel can be called for by any member of the circle by using the chat function, using a word um, like wait um, or stop some, or you know, something that is just indicating that, and we'll, we'll um, mute everybody and just give ourselves a moment of silent reflection before coming back, um, back together. The fifth agreement is that the chat function is reserved for um, contributions from those who choose typing as their preferred mode of communication. If you don't feel comfortable speaking out, um, or are not able to, and for any gems or quotes that we harvest um, throughout. So any member of the circle, if you hear something that really hits home with you, feel free to type, just quote it, type it out into the chat so we have a running record of those things um, and can capture, capture those gems. And then the sixth agreement is that whenever possible, we take a pause before speaking and use sound verbal behavior, which is measured, deliberate, thoughtful speech um, when sharing our perspectives with the circle. So we're going to make our first round around the circle. And um, what we are going to um, do for our introductions today is to um, give our names, um, a land acknowledgement if you have one, Acknowledge the agreements, and um, if you have a talking, if you have your talking piece that you want to share as show and tell for circle, you're welcome to share with us your talking piece and what it means to you. Um, and then, if you're comfortable sharing a high and a low from the past week, so I will put in the chat box the um, five components of our introductions, and then I will I will do my my introduction. Um, for you first. So my name is Abigail Twyman and I acknowledge that I am on the ancestral and unceded traditional territory of Indigenous peoples of Alaska, specifically Quinket Ani. The Indigenous people of this land never surrendered the lands or resources to Russia or any European nations. I acknowledge this not only in thanks to the Indigenous communities who have held relationship with this land for generations, but also in recognition of the historical and ongoing legacy of colonialism. Additionally, I acknowledge this as a point of reflection for myself as well as we all work towards dismantling colonial practices. I have heard and understood and agree to uphold the agreements as, as I've stated them. My talking piece today is this cool little glass charm that I made with a local artist um, who's a glass artist and um, I attended a, an event around the holidays and made some really cool glass art and with, for my first time and it was really cool. Um, so that's my talking piece today. Um, my high for this past week um, was pushing in and getting involved with the um, Smart Start process with our school district. Um, while there's a lot of work to be done, I was very happy to kind of um, hear what the plans are and work and kind of and begin to work with the other people in our district to in, uh, figure out how we're going to enact those plans. So that's actually giving me a good, a good sense of hope, which is a good feeling to have. 
Um, and then my low for this past week was um, just sort of a, an article that was a reality check about the impacts of um, COVID and stay at home orders and um, uh, job losses on families. Um, I read an article yesterday about a, a large increase in the number of dom domestic violence reports and domestic violence deaths, um, which was very, was, it hit me really hard and hit my heart really hard. Um, and so um, that's a, that's, that's a low that I want to, you know, that I want to figure out what to do with, but I'm not yet there. So thank you all for being here and thank you for listening to my introduction. I am passing to number one, who is Mary. And if you could, um, so it makes it easier, especially as we get started, to notice who comes next after you and kind of cue them once, once you're done. Yeah, so my name is Mary Wong. And I already forgot what's next on the list. I acknowledge the agreements that Abigail read as I understand them. And I'm not sure I completely understand them, but I will work on that. Um, I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, land that is, uh, was occupied by the Ho-Chunk before the uh, white people got here and uh, continues to be, actually. There are a lot of Pochons in the area. Um, and it's good to see them becoming more visible than they were. I grew up in Wisconsin, so um, there were Native Americans in my schools, but we didn't talk about it. And so it is, it is nice to see people asserting themselves and saying, oh, I'm Native, and this is my tribe. And, um, the area I grew up in is more Menominee and Chippewa, further north. Um, I didn't have a talking piece, and uh, I looked over beside me, because I'm in my basement, and I picked up this, um, I don't even know what these are called, it's a little folding screen, I'm trying to put it so it doesn't, of um, Chinese Peking opera masks. Um, I love Peking opera, it, or Beijing Ju in Chinese, um, and it was given to me by a student, uh, a kind of an extraordinary student. Um, she is a gold medal kayaker, uh, Olympic gold medalist in kayaking, and I taught this really weird class a very low level, not very academic, um, retired athletes at one time. And um, this is really evocative of that kind of extraordinary teaching experience that I had sort of randomly. So this is my talking piece, but I'll probably fold it up and hold it like this, or maybe just open it a little to Sun Wukong, who is my favorite. Um, <laughs> uh, highs. I have to say that my highs this week have been my classes, teaching my classes. I'm doing teacher training right now of pre-service teachers. They are all over the world, mostly in India, this group, Ukraine, Mexico, Hong Kong. And they're just so devoted to delivering a quality education to these American undergraduates they've never met and won't meet. Uh, in person, and I, that, that's a real high for me every single day that I'm teaching and I go to work with them and they're so committed. Um, lows, oh, just try not to read the news. That's what I do, but when I do, it's, there are a lot of lows. And um, I think probably most, the one that's most present with me right now is the evictions. Um, Madison is scrambling to provide for families that can't make their rent and uh, there's a lot of different organizations trying to do something about that but putting people on the street now families lots of families it's it's pretty disturbing so that's my low am I gonna really end on my low 
yeah, I guess that's the end. <laughs> Over to you, Alex. I probably should have put that in a different order. It does feel kind of weird to end on a low. We'll go low high next. How about we go low high? Okay. Uh, let's see. So yes, I'm uh, Alex Weisenfels, um, also in Madison, Wisconsin, originally inhabited by the Ho-Chunk people. And uh, let's see, as I acknowledge the agreements, and again, I have this, um, this 3D printed, um, this is my logo. And uh, it's got, it's an octagon with an X and an F in it because XF is short, um, phonetically short for uh, extra dimensional cephalopod, which is my, my alias. Uh, let's see, no, I should still hold this up. Um, let's see, low, um, just feeling really, uh, really unmotivated at work just for various reasons. Um, it's not really a problem for getting things done because I just answered the phone, but trying to get things done between answering the phone, it's, uh, it's getting more difficult. And uh, let's see, but hi is I'm moving forward with uh, articles and, and things that I think can help people with, uh, with learning the tools that they need to get things done. So I'm feeling good that I can actually uh, communicate those. And uh, over to you, Debbie. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm Deepinda Ransi. My American nickname is Debbie. And it's a little funny, I didn't choose my name uh, since I'm talking. When I, I started my career uh, uh, 25 years back as a paraprofessional in a public school district. And my principal said, Deepinda is kind of long. Can I call you Debbie? I was like, oh, uh, okay. I was new to the country, I was new to the system, and I wish I, uh, I'm okay being tabby, I'm not saying that, but I wish I would have taken a stand and said, I'm learning a lot, you can just learn my name, uh, you know, but uh, uh, but I accept it, I'm at peace with it, but just a little funny story, like I didn't even my name, <laughs> you know, and it is in so many references and uh, so many other, uh, you know, it's gets so integrated with it that I, I just become Debbie. So, but my name is Deep and uh, I'm in New Jersey. And I, I looked into. I live in a county, Burlington County. So, the, my land acknowledgement is to Lani Lanapi Indians who lived here. And I also acknowledge my land back home from India, where I'm from. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm from north of India, so I acknowledge that land. My talking piece is this. It is a iPad I use when I'm doing a Shavasana and when I'm doing a meditation, sometimes it helps me just calm down. And it has rice in it, so it's really like it's very comfortable. Yeah. Okay, what is next one? I acknowledge all the agreements, though. As Mary said, I don't think so. I understand all, but I'm going to go deeper into it and uh, hopefully able to follow the Abby's uh, vision and understand it. Okay, so my I'll still start with my law. I lost a aunt in India to COVID, and uh, that was my law. And being more far from home. Uh, it makes it harder when uh, something, you know, goes wrong. Uh, so that was my low. And my high was my first attempt to do a Facebook Live uh, for a mindful ABA page. And uh, uh, so that was my, I, I got so excited that I was overly excited. So, <laughs> but that was, and I have to say that Abby motivated me because she's doing her lives and I'm the, you know, admin of, I started the Mindful Idea page during these times. I thought we all are struggling. There are teachers on it. There are BCBAs, RBTs, and like that. So that was my high. Uh, I think I did all right. Yes. Okay. Now, four is John. John, you are next. 
Thank Hello, you. I'm John Kelling. Um, I'm going to skip right to the lows and highs. Um, my low for this week was still not getting into exercise. You know, I keep trying to. Um, my high for the week was that I had uh, talked a conservative friend of mine into getting solar panels as we are both now on the same page when it comes to our concerns for climate change. So that was a good time. And um, next would be Maximus. Thank you, John. Hi, my name is Maximus Pepperkamp, and I live in Chico. And um, I'm uh, in the area where the Maidu people uh, live, and um, they have um, a rancheria uh, in uh, Oroville. And um, also the, the school uh, that I teach at, uh, Butte College, um, is also on uh, ancestral land of the, I think, believe also the, the Maidus or the Yahi Indians, I believe. Um, the Native American people. And um, so, um, let me see, um, the, um, the agreement, um, I really like this um, statement that I remember that we saying, Abby saying um, that we contribute to the circle, something that uh, helps the process along or that helps the flow of the conversation. I feel very strongly about that. And uh, actually my, um, my object that I have here, I hope you can see it. It is a large key, do you see it? It's a really large key. And it's actually the key from a friend of mine in the Netherlands of his house. And um, I used to go to his house on the other side of town on my bicycle. I didn't have a car back there when I st was still living in Holland. And, and I would always go to the other side of town to visit him. He didn't have a phone. He's kind of an awkward character. <laughs> he doesn't want to have a phone. And um, so I was always taking my chances if I went to his house on the other side of town. And, um, um, and, and I met him many times, you know, while he was there or somehow our, our schedule sort of coincided. I don't know. And, um, but sometimes I went there and he wasn't there. And he said, well, you know, at least you can go into my house, then they can have something to eat or something and stay there for a little while. And so he gave me this key. And it was funny because after he gave me this key, I, I went to him a couple of times, but every time I went there, he was there. <laughs> so I never used this key. <laughs> and, uh, and in the meantime, he has actually moved. He doesn't even live there anymore, but I still have this key. And, and he, is, he is also very important in my life because um, a long time ago, when I was in my 20s, and this is kind of like a little bit my, my, uh, my talking piece and also my high, because I receive regularly letters from him and I just received another letter from him. We write to each other handwritten letters. And it's always nice once a month or once in every two months we receive a letter and um, it's going well with him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to still maintain that connection uh and and oh and 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 his friendship is very important to me because uh, um as i was in my younger years or you know i'm now 60 <laughs> uh, but uh when i was uh, in my 20s um we met and at certain moment i began to talk with him about uh yeah, that we should actually have a different way of talking, you know, because it was oftentimes uh, kind of, I don't know, problematic, I should say, or or or, or chaotic. <laughs> and um, and he was at that time still using drugs and drinking, and you know, and I was never so much into it, but he was, and um, but nonetheless, he was really somebody who listened to me and. Um, so in spite of his uh, addiction, uh, we, we still had very often very good conversations when he was sober enough. <laughs> and um, 
Max, anyways, I'm, um, I'm sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pause and. Oh. Um, oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, my low, my low point is, um, oh, um, oh, I forget the low point, but, um, okay. Well, sorry. Sorry that I didn't make it so long. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Rachel White, and I am on Denina land. Um, I acknowledge the agreements. My talking piece today is a preschool art project that I found. It says O is for octopus. And it's got a little face on it from my um, kid several years ago. Um, low point. Uh, would be um, similar, I think, to to others. Um, just concerns with the news and the articles, and and how others are being affected by the current situations. Um, and specifically, sort of concern right now for um, the start of the school year. I mean, I know that's why we're here, but. Um, uh, specifically, uh, having talked with um, several individuals with kids on the autism spectrum who receive special ed services and are really struggling at how that's going to look for them this year. Um, high point would be um, I reached out to um, uh, my pastor to initiate a children's online education um, thing because they haven't done anything for the kids since they went online in March and he agreed so tomorrow we're gonna start up a kids program so kind of ties in with our education stuff too and uh, Natasha Hi, my name is Natasha. I acknowledge the agreement. Um, and I will, most likely, I will copy and paste the land I'm occupying right now. I'm on, I don't know how to pronounce these names, but I will add it to the chat box so you can just look. Um, I'm here in Chicago, Illinois. And my highs and lows, I guess right now, I'll reserve my highs and lows right now at this time. And my talking piece is my uh, graduation picture from high school. And I'm looking at it, so right now, I'm looking right now as I study for my final exam, just to get me through and, and keep and push me, encourage me. And looking at this, this girl who have, who have faced so many challenges in her life to come to this point and knowing that she have more years to come. So I'm just keeping um, in this picture as a reminder that I'm doing this for her. And um, and what else that we share, we share. And that's about it. Thank you. And uh, next person and next in line is, I want to say, Ms. Nancy. Yes. Yes, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nancy Salinas, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. But at the moment, I am in my hometown, McAllen, Texas. And this uh, land um, was uh, the land of was Coahuiltecan, which is uh, a Native American uh, tribe that uh, is no longer um, inhabited inhabiting this area. Um, a lot of it got absorbed into the Hispanic community. Uh, now uh, they died of um, an epidemic uh, brought by the Europeans and whoever was left kind of got absorbed um, in uh, the Hispanic community, which as you guys know, um, a lot of Mexican people have that uh, mixture of uh, Spanish and um, a Native American. Um, so what's next? Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, and, and my hometown also in this whole area, the Rio Grande Valley is uh, going through a really bad COVID situation right now. Um, so my uncle has COVID. I just found out today, so that's my low. And um, I acknowledge the agreements. 
my uh, my item, the Chantal item, is this little thing that was a little art piece that was made by my youngest daughter. And uh, it's really cute. It says, I love you, mom. So um, there's that there. Uh, let's see. And my high was, uh, is I started exercising and uh, it might seem ridiculous, but like, it's really hard to go running with a mask on. So like I tried on the, the cover, just like, you know, that cover thing that uh, the shield and that works a lot better. So that was my high for, <laughs> for this week. Thank you. And the next person is uh, Lisa. Hi there. Um, let's see, I, I want to first say I acknowledge the agreements and uh, I really appreciate them. And uh, hope we can, I, I would love to see them in writing only because I want to, um, to use them in other ways. Uh, my uh, item is actually something I wear all the time. I don't know if you can see it. It's, uh, it's a necklace with three, th with three pieces on it. The first was a, it's a silver kayak paddle um, that I got in, in the middle fork of the, Sam on the main Salmon River in Idaho. Um, I met my husband kayaking and, and whitewater rafting and, and our children joined us with that. And then later, my uh, family has always been important to me. Sorry about that. And my grandson gave me a, a charm, if you will, that just says family. And then um, my family is a, is a mix, you know, and, and um, my, my children came with my husband. And, um, and so I wasn't always sure I'd always belong because I've seen families fracture um and wondered if if when they're you know when we're older if i'd still be a part of this family and my kids put a charm on here that's the infinity symbol which um helped me know my place so uh so highs and lows lows uh as we talk about education we are trying to build a school here in hollis i, I live in hollis which is the land of the Clinket, the Haida, and the Simshian from time immemorial, and we want to honor that. Um, and we are here with their permission, I hope. Um, we express gratitude for being here, and we are trying to build a new school, but we're trying not to build the traditional factory model school, um, but actually something very new and different, and we were given that direction from uh, the lieutenant governor and some other leaders in Southeast Alaska several years ago. Um, and it was to be designed by the kids. And you can have those goals and visions, but you're not always heard when um, people are used to building a factory model school. And so my lows have been that I feel like it's getting, the work the kids have done is being chipped away and chipped away and very little of it will be honored. Conversely, um, my high is that I had the courage to speak up about that this week, um, but it may be too late. And my other high is that I, oh, I'm sorry, I get teary-eyed a lot, is that I had the courage to join this group this morning. I wasn't, um, I'm, I'm pretty introverted, but I knew this group was out there and I felt like it would give me some strength um, and also great ideas. And I believe in community and connection. And those are values in our school and my own personal values. I'm just not very good at advocating for that for myself. So sorry to get uh, teary eyed, but I, I, I express great gratitude for you guys. So thank you. Did I do that right? Okay. And the next person is Harry. Hi, Harry.
Uh oh, it seems as though Harry might be frozen. So. Okay. Is oh, it my turn? It. Yes, it's it you. Turn? Yep. Sorry, uh, I was a bit a busy because I've been multitasking. I have a cleaner coming here today because I'm moving, and um, then I realized that there was a whole issue with like how they didn't know if the waiver page in cash or not. I had to kind of contact the service coordinator. Yeah, it's a big mess. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so just to double check, because I was actually here a bit late for this, the reason I just described. Uh, so I got I arrived to this meeting late. Um, uh, what are the questions we're answering? Like, is it just like uh, highs and lows of our week and what else? Yep. So it's just so um, I will uh, repaste it because Sheena just joined us too. So it's your it's your name, land introduction, acknowledge the agreements, and I posted I pasted them in the um, chat box as well. Um, you, if you have a talking piece that you want to show and tell, you're welcome to, and then share a low and a high from your week. So, so name uh, what tribes lived in my area before European settlers, and then, uh, or, and then high and low, and what are the other ones again? It's in the chat box. It's not, uh, land acknowledgement, or acknowledge agreements, uh, land acknowledgement, and your talking piece, if you have. Let's see. Oh, here it is at the bottom. There we go. Introduction, land acknowledgement, acknowledge agreements. Uh, I missed what the last person said, so what for the acknowledge agreements part, what did they say? I'm really sorry. That's okay. Acknowledge uh, agreements is the part where you say yes and, right? No, no, no. You just, I had just read the agreements. That's just kind of the, uh, kind of the, the rules of the group that I, that I read out. Um, so you're just saying that you agree to a whole group agreement. Oh, terms and conditions. Gotcha. Basic stuff. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, hi, my name's Harry. Um, I live in Ohio, which uh, was originally, if I recall correctly, uh, the, the tribes that the, uh, the, I don't want to say tribes, I want to say the countries or peoples that originally lived here uh, were Iroquois and, uh, I don't know what the other ones, I think it was Algonquin. I may remember, I, think, I know Iroquois lived here, I'm trying to remember if Algonquin was the other one, probably was. Um, and then, uh, uh, I agree to all of the rules of conduct. That seems pretty sensible stuff. Looking over this, um, and uh, talking piece uh, show and tell. Uh, uh, so, how long should that be? Like, is that like something that's like a really quick like mention of something? Then yeah, just a just a quick. Yeah. So um. So recently, I've been moving. <laughs> I'm moving to a new apartment, and it's like really different and interesting and it's like the new place is bigger than my current one it's like and i'm actually like getting access to like money to afford it now so it's like really amazing <laughs> i'm no longer trapped in the same place anymore it's been it's, it's great i'm gonna get pretty used to this soon <laughs> so yeah <laughs> that's my piece i want to show and tell and then uh i was asking uh oh yeah and the high and low so the high point of my week would probably be the fact that I'm moving and well, no that's not the high point the high point is uh, uh, some of the the two Facebook posts I wrote recently uh, that got some pretty positive responses and the low point uh, would be uh, huh I don't know what the low point is that's weird that's never happened to me before oh my gosh marvelous <laughs> okay so yeah Sorry, that took a bit longer than I expected. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you adjusted this. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, I need to mute, mute myself. Sorry. That's awesome. Thank you. And then Sheena joined us. Sheena, you are last up for introductions. Welcome. It's good to see you. Hi everybody, how is everyone today? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late. <laughs> um, I am living in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, and um, introduction, um, I'm a mom and I have many roles 
I'm a yogi, behavior analyst. Um, yeah, and uh, my land acknowledgement, I missed our preview on that. So I, I went and I did, um, I'm gonna be learning along with you on this, but I know we have um, a strong um, Apache um, native, Apache um, land here in Arizona. And Tucson has an incredibly rich history. Tucson's one of the oldest, um, longest inhabited places, I believe, in the United States. Correct me if I'm wrong. So there's a rich, rich history there. Um, I acknowledge the agreements and I know what they are. Uh, for a talking piece or a show and tell, uh, I guess I can just share how much gratitude I'm feeling lately and um, just given everything, uh, I just, just, I almost feel like that, you know, that feeling like, do, I, who, why me? Like, I, I'm so grateful for everything in my life. Um, I just uh, ended a seven month job position that um, yesterday was my last day at my current position working for a, a very wonderful company. Uh, but there were just, you know, things that didn't, for lack of a better word, jive with what I value in terms of how I want to be in the world. And as a, both as a human being as a prof and as a professional. So it was bittersweet, though, because the whole week was saying goodbyes and hearing a lot of positive feedback from all these people who thanked me and said things like, what are we gonna do without you? And I just had no idea the impact that I made. And so my heart just feels so full and privileged that I was able to learn about myself and learn how to be a better professional and also learn to listen to myself, um, even though it was a difficult choice. So that's sort of my show and tell, but also my high and low. I mean, I wouldn't really necessarily call the low part of, of being officially unemployed. Like the last time I was unemployed was when my daughter was an infant and she's 10 now. So there's a little bit of like, ooh, you know, like, you know, just that like not knowing, but on the same, at the same time, I feel incredibly at peace because I just feel like I made the right choice. I, I, I made the right choice. So just being, it's that um, being, comfortable with the uncomfortable of the unknowing of the unknown and what's to come and but also very exciting too so thank you for listening and it's good to see everyone today it's good to see you abby uh i look forward to participating today awesome thank you everybody welcome again um so um when we when we come into our circle in person there's often more there's often one or more things that are placed in the center of the circle to serve as a focal point um, the power of the of circle and the circle way as opposed to common approaches to difficult conversations which often turn into power struggles here in circle we speak from the rim into the center and our voices have equal power and we all have something to contribute. Today, our centerpiece, if you remember from, for those of you who were here last week, 
we saw a, um, a poppy flower in its budding stage. And today you get to see what that beautiful flower looks like in all of its glory. Um, so our centerpiece is the poppy in its flowering stage. Last week we saw it in its budding stage and we could only imagine what it would look like. Um, today we get to experience this beautiful work of nature in all its glory. And while many times of the, of the flower this is seen as the end stage, the reality is that contained within it is a seed pod in which the next generation of poppies are waiting for their time to remember forward the instructions that were passed down from generation to generation, as it is with all of us. This to me is a perfect image to guide our conversation today as we talk about what we will do to transform education. We will gather all the seeds contained within our personal flowers that are full of enormous action potential and work to create plans of action that will carry us and our future ancestors forward. And so today we again are um, honored to have Depender with us to um, guide us through our opening meditation so we can all come into our space and prepare to engage in a deep and meaningful conversation. So Depender, I pass to you. Okay, thank you, Abby. Just a short, like eight minute meditation. Just uh, everyone find your comfortable position, however they feel at ease, you know. You may gently close your eyes or if you feel comfortable, not leaving them open is an option as well or closing them half the way through as it works for you. Okay. Let your body settle in. Give yourself just a few moments. Let your breath settle in. Let the thoughts in your mind settle in. Like when the rain comes, it settles all the dust particles, dirt particles at, on the earth, clears the air in the same way. Just let all the thoughts settle down. They're going to stay there because it's the nature of the mind to think. But we are just letting it settle down for some time to get a little clarity in our mind. So today I want you to pick wherever you find your breath is the strongest. You might find your breath is the strongest by your nose or by your mouth or in your chest or in your stomach. Wherever you find it strongest today or at this moment, choose that physical location and bring your attention to that location. Now just observe that how the breath enters the body and then leaves the body. Natural, natural breathing. We don't need to do any effort to breathe. Breath is always with us. How with every breath, The chest rises and falls back down. Or your stomach rises and falls back down. Or if it's nose or mouth, how? The breath enters through your nose and comes back out.
if there are any thoughts that come, allow, allow, allow. Let them be. Don't fight them. Don't tell them not to come. You just allow. But once they come, let them float by. If you do get hooked onto a thought, when you realize you have hooked onto a thought, unhook yourself and bring your attention back to the breath. It's the nature of the mind to be a monkey mind. We call it a monkey mind because it jumps from one place to other to other. It's all right. That's his job. But when we realize we are hooking, we unhook, bring our attention back to the present moment, watching our breath. Some breaths might be long and some might be short. Some breaths might be strong and some might be weak. It's all right. We're just observing them. We are not judging them.
breath is a tool to bring our mind to the present moment. And breath has no color, no shape, no figure, no sect, no idol, no symbol. It's just there. And it's always with you. So you don't need something outside you to bring your mind to the present moment. Taking your time, slowly, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. When you're ready, gently open your eyes up. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you, Abby. Thank you so much, Dependal. No problem. Thank Feels you. I feel ready to jump into this conversation. How about you? Um, okay, so <clears throat> uh, we're going to, I'm gonna change things up just slightly here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post, cause I, ha I have a lot of questions, a lot of kind of meaty questions for today. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to, um, post the first question that I want you, I want us to do some silent, five minutes of silent reflection on, um, and actually, sorry, I'm going to post all of the questions and I'll read through them. And then we're going to take five minutes of silent reflection on which you can just sit and think about them or write on a piece of paper. And then each of us is going to get an opportunity to share our um, responses, kind of whatever, whichever one of one or more of the questions kind of that um, hit home with you. Um, so I'm gonna start the five minutes. I'm gonna begin posting questions in there. You can take just um, some time to reflect. And then when we come back, each person will get a few minutes to share um, and, um, and then we'll go into our closing round. So I'm gonna mute myself and begin posting questions.
Hi, I'm probably gonna have to leave. Uh, there's more going on that I have to multitask with and I expect that I'm really sorry. That's okay, it was nice. So, to sorry have about that. Time. That's okay, have a nice Yeah, time. I might come back later if the meeting's still going on later, but yeah, you know, so thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna give us till about 10.15, so about four more minutes, so just of reflection. And so be kind of gathering your thoughts about um, which of these questions you want to answer, you want to um, share your perspectives on with the circle. Okay, so I'm going to read out the questions um, just so we can uh, we can all hear them. And then um, each person is going to have about two min two to three minutes. So if you could be thinking about how to consolidate your thoughts into a two or three minute response to share as I read out the questions. What am I willing to do to transform education? What are the barriers or variables in the lives of children that could impact learning? Who teaches children? How do we get enough people to teach effectively to make all of this work? How do we support learners so they are at they're in a position or mindset so they can learn. How do we educate all children safely and effectively in their own homes? What role do parents play in all of this and how do we support them in supporting their children? How do we assess whether or not we're doing a good job? 
How do we measure outcomes? And finally, how do we balance safety while still meeting our goals? I'm going to try a I'm going to try a new strategy today to kind of to keep us flowing. Um, I will set a two minute timer and then give a warning, so you, a one minute warning to wrap up your thoughts. and I will begin. So in response to these questions, I really started to think about being something that came up last weekend from one of the circle from someone in the circle who said that we should be unapologetic. We should act unapologetically. And that struck me because I feel as though I've spent a lot of my life apologizing. Apologizing for how I feel, apologizing for what I'm thinking, apologizing for what I said, and apologizing for how I acted not because there was anything inherently wrong with what I was doing, aside from the fact that it went against the majority or the mainstream or kind of what was supposed to be or what an authority figure said was supposed to be. And so, I am willing to do whatever it takes, whatever is in my power, whatever I can with the life that I have, with the breath, with however many breaths I have left to take. Um, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to transform education. Um, and that starts, that starts here. Well, it started a long time ago, but it continues and is kind of recapitalized here. And that's my two minutes. And so I will end there and pass to Mary. So, um... I'm going to focus in an entirely different direction because honestly, apart from writing reflections on my many years of teaching and the things that I see, I don't have a strong sense of what I can do. I'm not involved in K through eight. Um, but something I've been aware of when my own children were in school and just always because of what I do is that the very often I think there's a language barrier even when everyone's speaking the same language and certainly when parents are operating in an ESL capacity in a, in a in their second language and the child is operating in a second language and it, I think one of the barriers that I recognize that I have potential to help with is that that um, students need to be spoken to in a way that they understand and I see that often I, like I used to help in my daughter's classrooms and I'd see the way the teachers talk to the African-American kids and how it was very different from the way the parents of those kids talk to them and that the kid wasn't getting the message often and I think that um, when we're adding in this extra layer of um, remote online instruction, that that just becomes, you know, gets bumped up a whole new level of what am I being asked to do here? Are, do, I, do I understand the goals and outcomes as a child? Do I understand the goals and outcomes as a parent in a way that makes sense in my world and to me? Um, 
So that is a barrier that I can think about and possibly write about in a way that might be meaningful. Alex? Is this uh, just one question or just sort of summing up all of them? Yeah, just summing it up. Okay. Okay, well, let's see. All of them, I was writing down the answers and they all have kind of the same theme, which is people need a, a stable environment, students need a stable environment, and they need the, uh, the right tools, the right paradigm to, uh, to understand what sort of problem they're trying to solve, and they need people to give them specific personal feedback on the way that they try, the way that they practice. So anything that we anything that we do needs to have those three things: the uh, environment that that they can feel safe in, and then an understanding of what they're trying to attempt, and then somebody to observe them and see. Okay, I see that you did this. Um, that that will result in this. If you want this result, you could try doing it another way. Something like that. So those those three things. I'm not even sure that that mainstream education really pays attention to those things or invests resources in them. But once we have those, then we, of course, still have to figure out what's the best way of doing that. And I'm willing to to try and share my way, even if I come across as arrogant or foolish. Although, of course, I'll do my best not to. Hi, I think it's me. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to start with the barriers. So I would say the barriers are I uh, work with a lot of being a behavior analyst, BCBA, a lot of state insurance cases, which are more minority and low income group families and a lot of immigrants. So the lack of resources, um, lack of support system. I have seen it ultimately boils down on the mother to do everything. And that as a woman and as uh, it just makes me feel like she can't even if she wants to, right? I will like the father, a uh, man's role to be changed right from, we have to change. So as mothers, as women, it is our responsibility if we have a son. I think so we teach them a little differently that, oh, you are a man, you just provide. No, that's not the case. Like, it's we both provide now i work too as a woman so so that contribution i think it has a deeper roots than just saying to any dad and that part i have seen actually across income group and across races uh, i have to say um, white man is the sorry i is it right to say that way or not but he is the most involved uh, any other race. My observation, right, and uh, and I'm married for 25 years. My husband is from India, but I totally agree with it. But still, it is less involvement. There should be more involvement, you know. That and uh, yes, outcome. How to measure the outcomes? I think the best objective is is. Uh, it's not subjective, you can't go back and forth. So um, that will be a good way to be measuring where we are going. And uh, what will I do to change it? I think I will be more outspoken. I'm getting better at it. First few years, I was like, oh, I'm a woman. I don't know, will they care about my thoughts? I'm brown, I'm immigrant, I have an accent, and I was a little bit in my shell and being a behavior analyst and uh, I just evolved and I'm just speaking my mind more. If it's not fair, then it's not fair and I'll speak up. Thank you. Um, I hope I can be clever enough to get through all my thoughts in a few minutes. Um, as far as uh, who, who teaches and how, we, how do we get enough people to teach effectively, I feel like there have been a lot of ideas that are thrown around that have been thrown around that can be maybe managed at a 
or, or even measure it at a, at a smaller scope. Um, you know, like maybe like I'm thinking about small, well, I don't know if this is a small thing, but like changing the uh, mindset about homework and, you know, where, where homework is done or what, what is important about doing homework or, um, um, you know, introducing um, behaviorism, I guess, in, in classrooms. Certain things can be done at, at a smaller level and maybe, um, I guess, tracked or measured on a smaller level. And then that can be like a stepping stone to future change. Um, I think in for how we measure, you define a little bit of a scope here because you know if I think about total system, maybe one way to measure how well we're doing. Now I'm not talking about necessarily education, but just how well we're doing with a movement per se. Um, you know, right now the question. Well, right now it's, I hear that there's an opportunity to contribute to change. But at some point, I'd like to hear that we are in the process of considering change. And when we start to hear the, the language shift, I feel like that's really a sign that it's taking hold. But that's like a total, that's like more of a systemic change. Like if you hear that your school district is adopting a new methodology or something like that that would be an indication that we've really made a lot of progress in a big way but are we really looking to do that is that the scope that we're after or are we looking to measure success in smaller ways in maybe like I, I don't, i'm not sure the language necessarily that i want to use but like kind of fly under the radar changes to education systems, like things that we can do that aren't necessarily perceived or like huge changes, but um, you know, introducing smaller things like um, more social contact or emphasis on social contact, th things that um, I guess going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, just um, introducing change at smaller levels. So um, I think we're still maybe trying to feel out that scope. So I'd like to see us, oh, I'm way over time. I'm sorry, yeah, anyway. You did like, you just hit three minutes, you're, you're good. That was, I was okay. really on a good track there, so I didn't want to interrupt you. Thank, thank you, you for, thank you for sharing, John. I'd like to, um, to piggyback a little bit on what uh, John just mentioned, these uh, these smaller changes, I think that is where um, where uh, educators need to put most of their efforts and where they can affect most change, uh, because we are talking about these smaller changes, these incremental changes anyway. Where, yeah, you could say uh, in, in in what he was just saying, the connection will create more of an attraction if you will uh, more of attention for what we are learning and so with regard to what is presented and how it is presented i think it is very important to distinguish between negative and positive reinforcement where in the first case in negative reinforcement students would be learning to avoid negative outcomes to avoid a bad grade versus the first the second one is like yeah if if you do it right and if you're interested and if it is interesting and if you feel that it is appetitive you know then you want to hear it you want to know it and it is it's appealing so um to me positive reinforcement is the way and and decrease of anything that is punitive yeah and um and so um yeah, that's kind of where, where, where I stand on that. And I think each individual educator can can uh, learn the skills that will, uh, yeah, will make that possible.
So I think that one thing that has um, maybe become apparent and is starting to become apparent on a larger scale is that we're all going through this and things are not going to be the same for at least a little while. And, and realistically, I don't think we will return to pre-COVID exactly. One of the examples being how acceptable and comfortable people are becoming with distance um, communication and, and video um, communication and online learning and things like that. And I think that's a huge benefit that people that may not have adopted some of those things are having to do it and therefore um, are seeing that things can be done that way. And, and so to me, I think that this is like an opportunity to do things in a different way temporarily, <laughs> which then can like open a door to let's, hey, this works for some people. So the things that come to mind are like, the it takes a village and that one room schoolhouse kind of a model where you've got a small group and you've got people who have some experience in that particular area, maybe are, are providing instruction on different skills. Um, also, you know, how do we assess, how do we measure outcomes? I think we have to redefine what our goals are. Um, there's lots of ways to measure things. Um, having, uh, you know, we, we can do video samples, we can just talk to the learners, we can take pictures of product measures, you know, some of it's just exposure, you know, there's, if somebody just reads to a kid, you know, we know with research that that can benefit them. So sometimes it's just like being exposed to something. Um, I have so much I want to say, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm thinking that something that I would like to do actually is um, YouTube was mentioned or, or Facebook Live and things like that. Um, parent and caregiver education around how, what they can teach or how to connect with others in their community that would still maintain safety because we're still talking about like small bubbles um to share and not be stuck in like well my kid needs to do workbook pages like no teach them how to cook this year you know teach them how to garden teach them how to like i mean even video games have some educational value your hand eye coordination you know like break the idea that it has to be book learning <laughs> workbooks and and then go from there and just teach what you have and what you know and um and and be open to the idea that it's going to be different and we're all going to be starting from a different point next year anyway so thank you <laughs> um natasha Natasha, you're next if you have, if you're ready to share. If you're trying to talk, Natasha, you are on mute, um, but she might also have stepped away. So we'll give a few more seconds. Um, so Nancy, if you want to go, if, um, um, when Natasha comes back, we'll circle back to her. Thank you. Sure. I'm actually glad I came after Rachel because some of the points that she was talking about, uh, are related to some of the things that I was thinking about. And, um, one of the things that I keep thinking about is how we already know what works and some communities, uh, especially abroad, some communities here, we're, you know, already implementing some of the things that work and it's unfortunate because i think most of the research did come from this country <laughs> um but uh 
another point is that the ones that do have that those things that work available are usually uh, communities that have resources or that the parents access resources, even if a lot of well, you know, and, and some of the things that come to mind are, you know, some of the Montessori communities that focus more on experiential learning um, that we can actually be trying out with uh, teaching parents. Um, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. I, I, I had a message that said unstable, unstable connection. <laughs> Our unstable connection, sorry. So um, what I was thinking about that is, um, um, you know, experiential learning that can make, uh, you know, activities fun for both parents and children. I'm thinking also uh, a lot of like parent, uh, like uh, parent training. Like I feel like not only do we have to, we need to focus more on like coping mechanisms for, for kids, but on coping mechanisms for parents. And like nobody is born knowing how to be a parent. And I feel like we expect parents just to like get this themselves, right? And that's not the way it works. Uh, especially me having two children, one being pre BC, pre ABA and another one being post ABA <laughs> and seeing how, how it's so useful just to be able to teach parents uh, just how to cope better and how to teach uh, learning to learn skills, executive function skills. Like I believe it was you, Rachel, that was saying uh, about reading to your kids. You know, like that's just something so important that can be easily translated uh, to outcomes. Um, other things that I was thinking about is uh, cultivating a community. Like who's going to be teaching this? Like the fact that like, uh, I believe it was Debbie that was saying that we expect the mothers to do a lot of this teaching but uh, with a community with much better and, and support systems would much better get the get these things uh done uh, versus just expecting the parent and having that individualist individualist uh mentality of like that's your kid you deal with <laughs> that's your problem right uh, because knowing that we're all connected in a community and what happens to your kid's gonna affect what happens to my kid okay <laughs> thank you uh abby i think that's that's a lot of like my my thinking was surrounding uh parents and supporting parents and how they can play a role and and achieving the outcomes that we want for the kids okay i'm done <laughs> okay. i believe who's next lisa yes so I, I made some notes, uh, and 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 so first, what am I willing to do to transform whatever it takes um, within my values? Uh, but I'm constantly exploring those values to make sure they're what they need to be. The barriers and variables, um, you know, I'm older and um, I run into. Um, I was one that would say this is not the way I learned and there's a lot of fear about change uh, when my son enrolled in an expeditionary learning school I uh, was there as a paraprofessional because I was in midlife career change and it was a new junior high and I was a nervous wreck because it just I thought when are the heck are they going to start teaching there's no books there's no um, and they're doing all this this uh, touchy feely stuff, and then all of a sudden, I realized they've been teaching all along. First of all, they set the stage for a community of supportive learners, but also they were teaching content. They just weren't calling it science or math, and it was impressive. And I'm grateful that that's where I learned how to teach. Um, I know the other barriers are. Uh, that not everyone understands that kids are all different and that we shouldn't have them all sitting down when in fact if you go to a board meeting or any adult meeting adults are up and down and moving around and I tell kids adults don't go to the bathroom as much as you think um, they just can't sit still and so we need to allow our kids to learn how to function and understand what they need and the environment doesn't have to look like what school looked like for us who teaches, you know, and how do we get enough people? I say we all teach. 
and that includes the kids. And sometimes I think of myself as a tour guide to help them access what they need um, and, and take them to where um, they can dig further and, and create their understanding. But certainly it takes the community. And so that means bringing in the people that know what I don't know. Uh, and how do we support the learners so they are in the position and mindset? They have to be safe, valued, and connected first. And I know all of you have no doubt believe the same, that when kids come to school, if they need food, a shower, clean clothes, or sleep, that's what I take care of first. Um, and, and so the, the setting needs to feel safe and not punitive. And I know you talked, somebody mentioned about um, the, the grades being good and bad. And as soon as we start that thinking, as soon as students are so focused on their grades, we've lost them as learners. And so if we help them to identify the question, to lead their learning, and if we take a holistic approach, we're gonna have successful lifelong learners. And how do we ex you know, do this safely in their own homes? Part of it involves educating the families and the parents um, because many people, we have to be really careful or we're gonna end up right where some people just are shoveling content with videos and then worksheets. Um, or going back to like when I was a kid where you'd read the chapter and have the questions at the end of the chapter and you had to rewrite the whole page of wherever the answer was. I don't remember any of that content. Um, how do we educate them safely? We visit them personally. We go, we, go um, we do online groups. We listen to what they say and make the changes in how we're delivering content. And it has to be individualized work designed for, you know, from their interests and use what's there. Someone said cook in the kitchen, use the forest, use the family culture. And what role do parents play and how do we support them? We need to connect with the parents as much as the kids and listen to them because they're afraid. They're afraid their kids are regressing when actually this type of learning can help them move forward in ways you couldn't have imagined. And as long as we have shared clear goals and outcomes, and how do we assess? You know, student reflection, parent reflection, um, observed student engagement or disengagement, portfolios to show their growth over time, Socratic discussions. Have the students identify the way they can best express what they've learned. Um, it may be a piece of art. And how do we balance safety? Um, I think the first point is honest communication and a connected community. I hope I haven't gone over and not rambled too much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Sheena. I, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question. You meant like metaphorical forest, right? like everybody never mind okay you know i i, I actually love that <laughs> um you know we we live in the middle of a national you know the largest national forest in the in the country and uh, the largest uh, temperate rainforest and so i tell the kids that that's the best classroom in the world um there's nothing you can't learn in this forest but you're right. I like the metaphorical forest too. And now you're gonna now you're taking me down a whole place for me to explore this week. Thank you for that. Awesome. I love that. Uh, is it me? I think it's me because it says ten. All right, um, Lisa. I am envious of your hammock situation. Um, with pine trees behind you. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm, I was listening and I'm, I'm hearing, a, um, it's really great. I'm hearing a common thread of community. And I really do think that uh, a, a lot of healing needs to take place in our communities. Um, and a lot of togetherness needs to be fostered. 
and realizing that we're all in this together. I, I could go through all of these questions. Um, honestly, to create productive answers, I would want to sit and like really get into there and think about it. But my, my off the top thoughts are um, that we're all in this together and perhaps creating uh, other people have mentioned, you know, smaller things from which we can build upon um, where we start to create connections with one another uh, so that we have a support system uh, because that's what we need more now than ever before. And how do we do that? We put ourselves out there. We, we, get create, I, I believe creativity is going to play a huge role in this. Um, someone else mentioned um, small school houses. I would, that would be amazing to see more things like that. I don't know if anyone agrees with me, but um, following up on, you know, what are parents' values? What matters most to you with, for your children? and connecting over that and then for teachers what are your values and what matters most to you and what's worked for you but just coming together and creating spaces for people to connect to generate creative ideas for supporting one another and being there for our kids and being there for one another because i'm sure there's a lot of feels a lot of anxiety going on right now uh, so we need each other coming together, getting creative. Hopefully that summarizes it. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. And thank you um, to those of you who dropped some, dropped some gems in the chat box. There was a lot of really really good stuff in there. So thank you so much for sharing your um, thoughts and perspectives on these really, they're very deep, meaty questions. And you're right, Sheena, like if we could have like <laughs> done 30 minutes of writing or <laughs> more, um, maybe in future action circle cycles, we'll send out questions beforehand so people have even more time to like really digest and um, consider consider the responses so maybe a, like a second time around thing yeah sorry yeah. and you know they say that you know the the developers of the circle way um that you know it's kind of like the circle's done when the circle's done we don't usually you know don't necessarily have a time limit like at 11 we stop um but for kind of the, you know, in, in essence of, in respect of people's time, we try to keep things connect, try to keep things as concise as possible when we can. Um, but this conversation, we could probably spend all day and go keep going around and around and go deeper and deeper. Um, so hopefully you'll kind of, you can take this and maybe take it into some of your own circles and take that deeper dive into some of these topics. Um, and I'll be posting um, the, the, um, video will be shared. So um, we'll be able to hopefully go back and do some more of that deeper reflection and taking it to the next, to taking some next steps. So for right now, what I'd like you, what I'd like to invite you to do is to bring yourself into a com comfortable seated or laying position on your hammock. And I agree. Yes, we should have, we should have hammock meetings. I love it. Um, could, I've got lots of trees here. We could put hammocks in a circle and it would be amazing. Um, so come to a seated or lying position with your um, spine straight, shoulders relaxed, eyes closed, or um, just gently softened. And just begin to notice the cadence of your own breath as we are preparing to leave circle. As you just start, as you just notice the thoughts that are flowing, notice the breath as it's 
going in, coming in and going out. And as you continue to breathe, I'd like you to focus your thoughts on the words that you heard and the feelings that you felt throughout the conversation today, both from yourself and from others. And consider how you could turn these thoughts into action in your life in the service of producing meaningful change. Rehearsal is an important strategy in the work we do. So really take time to visualize what your actions will look like. And as you're visualizing what those actions will look like, tap in and check in with your belly and try to feel what it will feel like when you're engaging in those actions and what it will feel like, what the impression that will be left when you're done with those actions, both on impressions on yourself on your heart, in your mind, and impressions in the world around us and around you. As you continue to breathe, I would like you to consider the following two questions and we'll take a moment to think about how you could sum up in six words an intention for the coming week or a motivational motivantra, something to keep you going this week and empower you. Six words that can summarize how you feel and how you want to carry yourself through this world. As you're ready, you can open your eyes if you have your six words captured in your mind. Uh, and maybe write them down on a piece of paper um, or you can type them um, into the chat box. And then we're just gonna do a quick, a quick fire round, six words, no explanation, six words that will guide you through your week. <clears throat> so when I when I first did this exercise when it was taught to me I can't six words came to me that guide me and have become my like my mantra for myself and to I'm a reminder about why I do what I do and those six words are value powered justice demanding peace warrior and I pass to Mary Mary, you're muted. Sorry. Hi, I thought I unmuted. Okay. So intentional reading and writing, reaching out. Facebook. Alex is here. have volunteer 
to help teach communication skills. And John, it's you. Um, I have keep observing this is really important. <laughs> Those six words. Awesome. Maximus. Um, remaining focused on physiological state of well being. And uh, Rachel? It takes a village, community support. And Natasha. Not sure Natasha is available. Um, I'll just say mine real quick. Okay. I was thinking about like uh, em empathy, compassion, empathy for others, compassion for myself, sitting in discomfort, finding my values, rehearsing them and modeling these for other people. Oh uh, my. Like, uh, I'm a I'm a processor, so this is a struggle for me. Um, and gosh, I love all of yours. So know that they're going to be in my heart. Um, sorry, I'm talking to um, one of the one of my words is enough. Another is um, more of a phrase, and I think it goes on over six. But forgive me; it will all unfold as it should. Um, so thank you. And next is Sheena. Did I say that right? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. All right. So this is just boom right off the top of my head. Thank you, Abby. Off the, off the top stuff is great. <laughs> Makes you real, think real fast. But I have thought a little bit about this before. But uh, so I wrote uh, change champion supporting psychological flexibility and safety. Awesome. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you all. I really love those. Those are those are really powerful. They are, you know, I you know, they will they will remain in my heart as well. So hopefully if you didn't get a chance to drop yours in the chat, Lisa, I dropped yours in, in the chat for you. Um, but if you want to drop yours in the chat as well, you are, um, you're welcome to, that'd be awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have one more gathering in this cycle of conversations um, on transforming education. Our final gathering in the cycle is a time where we will have a little bit more freedom to share our stories about what we are are doing right so the cycle it starts at the in the first gathering is about setting our intentions you kind know, of why are we here establishing our questions the second gathering is always about brainstorming what we could do just kind of spaghetti on the wall the third gathering like today is what what will we do what 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 are those specific actionable things that we can do um and then the fourth is to you know do engage in some self-reflection or some um further um you know gratitudes about what we are doing and how things are going so if you have anybody who you would like to invite next to our gathering next time you are always more than welcome to make invitations our next cycle, which will begin week after next, um, is going to be hosted by our very own Alex, which I'm super excited about. Um, and then the one after that is going to be guided by our very lovely Sheena. And the one after that is going to be guided by Maximus. So I'm super excited um, to have a wonderful group of people who have been so reinforcing to me um, and um, really making sure that um, 
we're carrying this forward and we're taking action. And so I'm really um, very excited to continue this on uh, moving forward. So the last thing that I'm going to do is drop in the chat box again, um, the two links, one of them is to our um, bonfire fundraiser that is all of the proceeds are going to native movement. Um, I mentioned that um, before we started that we, that I am attending an, or, an organizers summit starting this coming week, um, uh, that it's being hosted by the native movement. That's all about decolonization and just transition. Um, and so in honor of them and to support the work that they're doing, I um, have put together a, uh, t-shirt fundraiser through Bonfire. Um, and then the second link there is to um, my our wish list on Powell City of Books um, that you are welcome to um, look at. I put it together so people can have a list of resources that we recommend that we think are of high value um, if you're interested in learning more about a variety of topics that are foundational to the work that we do. Um, and so we encourage you to buy the books for yourselves, buy a book for a friend. And if you would like to um, share resources with um, those of the, the people here in um, our community on Prince of Wales Island, I would be honored um, to receive a, um, a gift of a book from our wish list that I can then pass on and share with one of my community members as well. So with that, I will share my final thoughts um, for today. So today our, our conversation focused on what we will do to transform education. Our goal is to bring the right people into the circle so we can find our path forward towards peace in this world through collective action. Our perspectives are diverse, but our needs are universal. Our stories are different, but our ultimate goal is the same. Together we will take action, together we will transform education, and together we will create peace. If you want to stay on after the recording has ended for a little social time, ask questions, any follow-ups, you're welcome to. Um, but with that, I will wish you all a farewell. Until next weekend. Thank you.